Hello everybody, hi, hello, good morning guys, my name is EJ and I'm here again with another narrated art time lapse video and yeah, we're here to look at this artwork called Ancient Discovery. Um, so <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a very interesting project to look at. Um, but before I start going off and talking about the whole idea um, about this piece, I guess uh, now would be a great time for me to just talk real quick about uh, a little correction on this particular project. Uh, at the very beginning uh, of this video, there's this title card that kind of talks about um, the piece. Well, it talks, <laughs> it really just mentions the title of the piece and then like a few other information, like how long it took me to work on this piece. Um, so on that title card, it says that I worked on this for about three and a half hours. That's um, really a minor correction or I'm about to add a minor correction to that. It's really not three hours, three and a half hours is really more. This illustration is really more like a five hour project, a six hour project. Um, and the reason why is because and the reason why there's an additional two hours is because um, it's really two separate projects. Um, what we're looking at right now is me doing a sculpt on Blender. And this was technically a totally separate project. Like I was just doing this for fun. I, I at the point in time that I was working on this, the, um, the prompt challenge, cause I was, I'm doing this whole illustration for a prompt challenge, right? Uh, the prompt challenge didn't even exist yet. Um, the prompt challenge didn't exist for another like four or five months. So at this point in time, when I'm working on this face, I didn't know that I was going to be working on an illustration called ancient discovery. Um, so yeah, these are two totally separate projects. Um, originally I didn't want to add this part right here cause I thought, you know, it really wasn't part of the project, but then I realized that I'm going to end up using this little asset here that I'm working on. So I might as well just add this, uh, really cool looking sculpt that I'm working as part of my narrated art time lab. So yeah, lengthy introduction <laughs> and lengthy correction, but I guess now would be a great time for me to just really talk about what's going on and what we're watching in Blender. Of course in Blender, what is going on is that I am sculpting a face. Um, I have, I don't do this a lot. You know, but it's always just good practice. Faces are just one of those hard things to kind of sculpt. I've seen people do really well and and, and is really good at sculpting faces. Like they, they can do uh, a fairly finished or a fairly nice sculpt in about an hour or so. Me on the other hand, I struggle. Like I, I don't feel confident with my faces until like about the two, two and a half hour mark, um, which is fine. I mean, you know, I'm not, I mean, sculpting is not my greatest, uh, skill. I really have to say that, you know, drawing is definitely my top skill compared to like my sculpting. So of course, you know, I mean, I have my own set of skills that I'm really happy with and I'm really proud of. And sculpting, you know, I, I do it because it's fun and I love doing it, obviously. And it's good practice, you know. Um, so in the case of this particular piece, it's a great practice for me to kind of just, you know, refresh my memory on how to do faces and whatnot. And of course, it helps me with my artwork too, you know. Um, so yeah, uh, I did this for a warm-up. Uh, no clear idea of who I'm sculpting or what I'm sculpting, I was just sculpting a face. And I don't really remember how long it took me. Um, I I think in my notes it says on here to add two additional extra hours on the the time card, which is I've already mentioned. Um, so I'm assuming that that face sculpt was really uh, two hours long. Maybe a little bit longer, I'm not really sure but I kind of average things out anyways. So yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, I finished the sculpt as you can see, and then I decided that I was going to do some more edits on it. And at this point in time, um, 
I'm not sure if this was okay. I think this is still separate project. I think at this point in time, I still not doing it for. Yeah, this is this is. I'm like <laughs> looking at the title bar and on top just to refresh my memory. This is still part of that earlier project. Um. So it's not. This is still not part of the whole. Um, ancient discovery thing this is just me just having fun and basically what i'm doing is that i'm pretty much happy with everything i did with the face the the first get-go but i'm really unhappy with the eyes i could tell you this right now eyes are just like my biggest weakness and i have a feeling that it's also a big weakness for a lot of people it's just a very tough area to sculpt um there's many different ways to conquer this. Um, lately, I've been trying to separate the eye, the sculpting of the eye separate from the face. So what I've been doing is I've been sculpting the eyelids and then the eye separate from the face and then just attaching them later. Uh, in this particular instance, I'm still sculpting the eyelids together with the face. So really what's just separate is just the eye in itself. Um, but yeah, I always have a hard time just sculpting this. Um, it just it never ever really feels right for me. And so yeah, that first sculpt that was like my problem. I've seen people where they just sculpt uh, the eye as part of the general mesh, like they don't separate the mesh at all. And I'm just clueless as to how they do it because they make it look so good. Me on the other hand, it just looks like a a lump of clay, <laughs> which is kind of. <laughs> What digital sculpting is really is just a lump of clay, but a very ugly looking lump of clay. <laughs> so, yeah. But anyways, I'm just fixing the eye and you can see that I literally spent a lot of time on it. I probably spent as much time editing this eye as much time as I did sculpting the whole entire face. But whatever, <laughs> you know, it's good practice. So, but yeah. But it's just generally a hard area to to sculpt. Like I, I, I'm always having a hard time with the area closest to the nose. I always feel like that's way too lifted or way too farther up from the plane that it needed to be. Um, and. The eyelids always like tricks me, so and that's the reason why I decided to just separate the eyelids from everything else, and, and so I just kind of got into that habit of just doing it that way. Um, so yeah, I'm still kind of like in a development phase when it comes to sculpting. Um, my I shall I will still be sculpting a lot of things here and there to just improve on that, but. Um, yeah, as for this particular face, I obviously had a challenge with the eyes. So anyways, now we've moved on from the face and basically at this point in time, um, at this point in time, I've already read um, the prompt or the prompt challenge for which I'm doing this project on. So, um, I'll talk more in detail about that, um, but for now, I kind of really just want to go over like what's going on in the video um, and kind of just talk about some of the stuff that I'm doing on Blender, basically. Uh, so basically, what I I'm doing now in Blender is that I obviously took that earlier project right because I realized, hey, I could use this this face that I did um, that was originally for fun and I realized I can use it as an asset for this particular um, illustration and so what I'm that's what I'm doing basically I, I took that face and kind of put it together into this um, shape um, man I forgot the exact term for it there's a an, uh, a, an exact term for um architectures that are like a tower uh man how do i say it or a pyramid on top oh man what is this architecture 
concept called. Uh, okay. <laughs> My Google search technique is very, very bad. Uh, there's a monument in Washington uh, that kind of reflects this. Sorry, I, this is going to take me a while to look this up on Google, and now I feel bad because I'm not narrating anymore. Okay, so uh, the Washington Monument. It's an obelisk. Oh, man, how can I forget the obelisk? <laughs> that is the architecture term that I'm looking for, obelisk. O-B-E-L-I-S-K. Okay, now that we have that <laughs> set. Um, so... The term for this challenge is ancient discovery. An obelisk just happens to be one of those ancient monuments that you find a lot, uh, especially in Egyptian digs and whatnot. Either you'll find a pyramid or an obelisk. Um, you'll find that too in, in Greek um, structures as well as, well as Roman uh, structures. So it's a very ancient, ancient kind of monument slash kind of structure and everyone's fairly familiar with it um i mean you've seen an obelisk at one point in time obviously you just don't know it's called an obelisk kind of like the way i am anyways so for this prompt of ancient discovery i decided that i wanted to do an obelisk but i didn't want to just settle for just one obelisk i ended up with four so i kind of ended up with this really quasi looking kind of monument and then of course there's a human face that i attach to it and it's kind of sad because the whole thing is not shown in the illustration i mean you can see the render of it or the semi render setup of it on the top right right now in blender and you can see that you can't see the whole monument at all so i spent like an hour modeling this thing right and well maybe not an hour maybe 20 minutes or so and you don't even really get to see the whole thing um and of course i made a choice not to show the whole thing because of other reasons which i'll explain in depth later uh, but obviously i just got done modeling the obelisk the four obelisk structure of sort with the faces in it and now what i'm doing is a nasa space shuttle that's what i'm modeling right now i'm just doing this rough because really what I really need all these objects for is just placeholders the reason why I'm doing 3d is so that I could get um, my perspective issues for my illustration as well as my lighting issues for my illustration all taken care of that's really just the whole idea of this um, especially since this particular illustration is just gonna have this very very unique lighting scheme which is a lot of the lighting is coming from the open the open docking bay uh, i think that's what that part of the space shuttle is called it's the part where you put like all the cargo bay cargo bay um so the cargo bay portion of the space shuttle is open and there's light pouring out of there and it's lighting up all this obelisk little structure right so you can see me set up the lighting structure in blender and of course, I'm going to place the space shuttle there, which you saw anyways on, on the final illustration is where um, the space shuttle is going to be. And then I also model this tiny little rectangles, which you can't really see right now. It's kind of close to the obelisk structure, but you can't really see it in the top right. You can see it more in the lower left. And basically, those little rectangles are standing for humans um for people basically and so yeah uh so what i'm doing right now in blender is just kind of setting things up setting up where my special gonna be see i moved that little small rectangle that's where the human's gonna be kind of gives me an idea of how big i need to make my human person to be my little astronaut and then of course i'm setting up the lighting at first i'm gonna have multiple lights i'm gonna have this um spotlight to kind of light up the whole scene nicely and then i'm gonna add a an object that illuminates which is what i just did just now um i think i just duplicated like a a pulley from the space shuttle and then just 
uh, turn on emission on it just to make it look like it's like the cargo bay is emitting um, a light basically and just shining on this whole uh, structure so yeah and that is my blender render right there uh, really nice blender render and then I imported it into Krita and then of course since you know all the perspective issues are done and all the lighting issues are done basically what I'm just pretty much just gonna do is just sketch out the scene real quick and then I'm gonna do a quick coloring um, of the scene basically I take my random mech brush and I just quickly color it uh, it's a very unique way of coloring things um, basically I'm like really focusing more on the values rather than the actual hues um, then as soon as I have my as soon as I quickly color it um, with my random hue mech brush then I smudge everything to kind of harmonize all the colors and then I detail on top of it so that's typically my process so now that I have mentioned all of that I really just wanted to take the time just to kind of discuss about my ideas on this particular piece because I thought my idea was very very radical and very cool <laughs> just to toot my own horn like because I mean some of my ideas are very, very questionable for for this one I really really like my idea in this one um so I guess real quick history to talk to you guys about how this came about this um prompt came from sketch zone um sketch zone uh is a group that i am in in discord again i've said this before um the sketch zone group that i'm part of in discord has nothing to do with the sketch zone podcast that's a totally separate group please do not confuse us with that group um the group that i'm in is a discord channel and we pretty much just talk about art and help each other improve on our art and whatnot yet all this great stuff right um one of the very one of our art activities is a monthly art challenge. Um, we call it Mac because it's a monthly art challenge. <laughs> um, and the very, very first one was this one. The, the prompt for the very first monthly art challenge was Ancient Discovery. Now, this was originally the first monthly art challenge, but I think they canceled it. I really don't know what happened to, to that particular one because... You know, it was like the first monthly art challenge, but then they revise the rules or whatnot. I, I'm not really sure what changed from the current setup of the monthly art challenge to the very, very first one. Because I know they changed the first one after they release it. And I, I, I think like they just discarded it all together or whatnot. Um, but yeah, so... um. The very, very first prompt for that challenge was Ancient Discovery. And of course, when you say something to the effect of Ancient Discovery, the word ancient just pretty much denotes that, you know, it's something that has to ha have happened in the past, you know, ancient Egypt, ancient Greek, ancient Romance. So the, that's kind of like the imagery that is evoked in one's head. So, you know, personally, if I was to hear that term all over again right like my first impetus to think of a scene would be something like indiana jones you know like some guy having some crazy adventures in egypt or something trying to locate like all this crazy treasures and whatnot i mean that's just kind of what that term specifically denotes in my head anyways but I wanted to change things around, you know, like I, I don't know where my idea came from to change things around. And I don't know how I came up with this illustration. Um, but basically what happened in my head was that I kind of thought of like a scenario where it would be cool to find an ancient monument of some sort out in space. And really the idea is not exactly new because transformers have kind of done like that idea before they've explored that idea with the 
I think it was Transformers 2, um, where they explored like the dark side of the moon. And it turns out in the dark side of the moon was this old, you know, Decepticon base of some sort, you know, so like basically kind of like the same concept, right? There's this structure that's floating above us right now on Earth, right? In some unspecified location that no, no astronomers has seen yet, because hello, the sky is huge. I mean, there's a lot of ground to cover when you look up at the sky, right? So it's kind of easy to miss this floating monument. And that's basically my idea, was there's this very, very human monument just floating randomly in space, you know? And you can tell it's human, a human monument and not alien, because you have this human face attached to it kind of like the way the sphinx does um in ancient egypt where you have the face of a man and the body of a lion attached to this monument right it's so basically that's kind of like one of my idea you know so it kind of elicits this whole notion of like well how did humans get this thing up any space in the first place you know and what function did it serve i mean and were there like early human astronauts like way before our modern time like you know so as soon as i started imagining this in my head i just went off i was just like wow this is like a really cool concept for me to explore personally because it is a cool idea like literally i can write a story out of this image that i'm doing and just come up with just like a very cool story like what would happen to our world if it if a bunch of scientists found out that somewhere on our earth <laughs> in our earth's um outer space right uh in the immediate vicinity of earth uh, someone found this floating monument that is very very human in nature made by human hands you could tell us human hands is made by human hands because well it just structure wise it just looks like it's made by humans and it's floating out there in space like what would happen to our society if someone found that out like you know this 2000 year old human monument just happens to be floating out there in space it's a cool story to come up with so yeah anyways um I was really happy with my interpretation of the ancient discovery. Um, it's a far stretch, though, <laughs> honestly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it'd still be a cool concept to explore. So anyways, <laughs> now that I'm done talking about my really, really cool concept, I'm just going to let this video play for a second. Um, Right now, I just finished my smudging thing, and really, in a few minutes, I'm about to start my detailing process. Um, and I could go on about that, um, but for now, let's just go enjoy the video for a second or two and just watch how things unfold art wise. <music> Thank you.
Okay, so at this part, um, I guess now would be a great time to start talking about some of the things that had transpired in the video um, while I was talking about my crazy cool idea for ancient discovery. <laughs> so yeah, um, some of the things that had transpired obviously is a quick coloring scheme that uh, I am notorious for. It's kind of a unique coloring um, method that I've sort of come up with. Uh, not really, because really my inspiration for <laughs> the coloring is Peter Polak. That's really who I kind of got the idea from. And I kind of refine it into my own little coloring method. Um, some of my sketch zone friends do not like this coloring method. Uh, they think it's too unruly and too crazy. And this illustration is actually a great example uh, of, of what they mean. Um, uh, in my defense, this was a much older um, illustration that I did, and I was still in the middle of trying to refine my coloring process. And and actually, in all honesty, my coloring process is still a work in progress. I mean, I'm still trying to change it up and trying to refine it, you know. But basically, the idea behind my coloring is that I want to throw in random colors, throw in some random noise right and the idea behind it is to kind of get um get some hues and some colors that i never would consciously think about putting in the first or i would never consciously think of putting in the first place so basically i'm just trying to look for like cool accidents basically you know um happy little accident to happen so i'm kind of like purposefully making mistakes just to see if i could come up with a happy little accident as bob ross would say you know um so basically in my coloring scheme i would throw just a bunch of random colors and then i would blend everything into a recognizable shape which you saw me do uh, at some point in time of my illustration process and then i build my details on top of that so basically I would smudge all the colors together until I get a base paint. Um, that's what I call my one layer that I work on. And um, this one layer typically at the end of my smudging slash blending stage, um, it's typically fuzzy. Uh, and so I build my details on top of that. And basically my detailing process is pretty much a three-step process that I do all throughout sections of the image, which the three-step process is, I delineate my edges, make my edges sharper, I accentuate my shadows, if some of my shadows need darkening, and then I add highlights. And you just pretty much just saw me do that all through the obelisk, where I just, where I started with the middle face at first, and then slowly, you know, did all the areas of the obelisk, then transition over onto the right face, in the right side of the illustration and then obviously after i finish all the obelisk i have begun my work on the space shuttle which you can tell right now the space shuttle is really fuzzy and i'm delineating my edges and making my edges sharper so that the shape reads better um i'm adding highlights uh, as you can see i'm adding a little bounce light uh, on top of that shuttle um, just to kind of denote that it's affected by the cargo bay which has all the lights. And again, this is a great example of some of the critique I got from my sketch on friends, where my color schemes are just too crazy. Inside the cargo bay of the space shuttle is white, bright lights. If they're white, they really shouldn't be throwing yellow lights. Because <laughs> right now, that cargo bay looks more like a disco bar more than anything else. <laughs> like, I'm like half expecting. <laughs> Uh, some disco band to come out of it like ABBA is just gonna just start singing randomly out of nowhere um, but anyways um, so yeah that's a great example of my coloring scheme being a little loose and a little too out there I would say a little too undisciplined I personally like it you know, and for the longest time, I was at odds with them because I kind of thought like, hey, look, my coloring scheme kind of has a Henry Matisse feel to it. And like, and it does. It really does have a Henry Matisse feel to it. You know, 
it's very, very unruly. But I do see what they're getting at is that sometimes it just does not work. So um, I guess it's just, you know, one of those things where it's really, really debatable. I kept this illustration because I thought this illustration was cool enough, even though there's that aspect of it that's kind of questionable, you know. I still like it, and after two years or a year or two, um, I'm still happy with it. Um, although I do sympathize with some of my friends now about my colors, that you know, my color schemes as of this moment have gotten a little bit more refined, I guess. Um, nowadays, I'm re limiting myself to an eight color palette that I get from Color Palette Cinema just so that. And ensures me not to go overboard with my colors because that seems to be like the consistent like critique and out of all my artwork is that my colors are just too out there you know so I guess in a way they're right I mean it's not so much as that you know I have yellow lights coming out of the cargo bay yeah it, that does work but the yellow lights on the cargo bay does it work with the rest of the colors that I use for my image you know I, I guess that's kind of like what they're getting at you know because I have blues on the earth and then I have muted yellows on the obelisk and then purples on the space shuttle whether all of those work harmoniously it's all kind of questionable but the cargo bay in itself having yellow lights like I honestly think it's still cool <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I mean I would very much like to see ABBA come out of a space shuttle right now and just start saying Inca for reals kiss. It just looks cool that way, but I digress. So, you know, uh, I'm kind of split on this whole issue. I see where my friends are coming from, and at the same time, I want to defend myself because there is some cool factor to some of the decisions that I made. And again, I didn't consciously think of putting yellow on a cargo bay. Again, all of that yellow came about from my crazy coloring scheme where I just literally just throw a bunch of colors, you know, and then blended all of them just to see what would work and what would not. I mean, that's typically what I do, right? Um, so, yeah. So, again, that's um, one of my critiques of this piece. Whether that's a success or not, I don't know. It's debatable. Uh, you can make your own opinion about it. It's all good. Uh, what not. And hey, look, I'm drawing the astronaut. Hey, astronaut, what's up? Um, the other critique that I have is that I really wanted full obelisk to be, you know, on the picture. But I know that if I zoom out too much to have the full structure in there, then the humans, which I'm drawing right now, of course, would be just too small and wouldn't be readable at all and i really really needed the people to be there just to kind of give everyone the idea of the scope of this object it's gigantic enough right that humans could explore it like it's a 30 floor building or something but it's obviously small enough that it took scientists and astronomers forever to find in our in our outer space right in our immediate vicinity so like that's kind of like the idea i'm going for you know because seriously a, a big monument like this can be easily missed in our immediate area just because there's just too much space to cover out there so so yeah i mean that's kind of like my critiques of this piece uh how i could improve on it i don't know um personally I'm probably just going to leave this piece alone. Like I wouldn't develop this piece any farther. What I would probably be more interested in is writing a story based on this image. Because it's still a cool idea. I mean, I still think it's a radically cool idea. What if Sinus found an ancient human structure floating in space? How are people going to react to find out that there were ancient, ancient astronauts? way before last century so i don't know cool concept i thought it was a cool interpretation of the prompt thank you um i didn't win the challenge by the way <laughs> so i don't think anyone thought my interpretation was all that great but i don't care uh it's still a cool concept nonetheless 
but this is it this is the end of my illustration thank you guys for watching it with me thank you guys for discussing it with me i'll see you guys in the next video good night